Mr. Ortiz, welcome to the 22nd international exhibition in East Serbia and thank you for joining us in celebration of the World Town Planning Day. It is a pleasure and it is an honor to be with you. Mr. Ortiz, uh, can you describe what is an explosive urban growth uh, that characterizes many cities around the world, especially Latin America, Sub-Saharan Africa, Middle East and Asia. And uh, how do you advise their governments in dealing with this issue? Well, uh, development means urbanization. If you uh, develop economically, it means a concentration of population in those places where production is, is mainly done. No? So the world is urbanizing very quickly. Uh, uh, 50% of the world population in city was reached uh, two years ago and now we are going at a very quick pace. Uh, it is expected that in the next uh, 20 years, 2,000 million people will move to city. That means uh, uh, 300,000 every day who have to build a city every day. And uh, many of those uh, huge metropolises are growing at uh, rates of 5% every year, which means doubling every 14 years. Imagine that you have to build uh, place or London or New York or Belgrade in 40 years, and you really see what is uh, what is at stake. Uh, the governments uh, are unable to address that rate of growth, no? and so they are, for many years, they have denied, they have been denied, saying people should stay in their villages and will provide them with a good life in those villages with social facilities and infrastructures and good housing and so on. But the governments did not do that. We were not able to do that. That is very, very expensive. So people are moving to cities and governments have uh, uh, denied that phenomenon and so they have done nothing. The result of doing nothing, nothing is that people go and don't find uh, a land to build, a uh, house to live, uh, facilities to make their life, and so uh, they create slums. No? And in many countries, 80% uh, of the development is taking place in slums. And if we, leave, if we let that go on, we are creating a, a time bomb. So what we do is to tell them, first, look at what uh, is going ahead, and plan for it, and let's look where things should be. You know? And that's what the, the book, The Art of Shaping the Metropolis, tries to provide with a toolkit to work with that kind of growth and not to be overcome by, by, by the time and be able to, to address the issue. And uh, we know that you base your practice on reticular mm -hmm. matrix planning or metro matrix planning which you first introduced back in 1996 in the regional plan of Madrid and which you also described in your latest book, the art, of Sh the art of Shaping the Metropolis. Can you tell us what are the basic, what is uh, the basic concept of this method and how do you propose it to rapid growing metropolises? Uh, the explosion of our uh, cities and the metropolis structures is new in the history of mankind. And we have to, uh, to, to, to invent, to produce the tools to deal with that. Up to now, our metropolis are growing in round circles. You put a ring road and then another ring road and go on with circles. Or they are growing in a scattered uh, structure that is called archipelago. No? Uh, cities, uh, like islands in a sea of, of, uh, of uh, environments. No? And that uh, is not enough. The circle grows, 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 and produces congestion, produ uh, produces high value of land in the center, speculation, lack of efficiency in economic terms. People which are poor are sent to the, uh, to the outskirts and have little accessibility to the public goods. The, the ones who can afford it are in the center. And th that kind of approach is not efficient, not equitable. And not sustainable. What does metropolitan metro matrix planning do? They realize that metropolis are always on the edge of the border of two ecosystems the sea and the land, a valley with a river, uh, a passage among mountains uh, to, to, for a plain. 
So it's always an advantage location that makes the metropolis grow and be huge. And that borderline between ecosystems is always a line. So by producing the understanding of the DNA of a metropolis, of the linearity, and then a, a, a perpendicular trans, transversal structure, we create a reticulum. Metropolis are, are many more uh, reticulas than circles or archipelagos or like Walter Cristal said in the 30s, uh, exact structures, which is a, a creation uh, in a featureless place that never exists. So what we are is saying, look at the DNA of your metropolis and work the future of your metropolis growing within that DNA instead of confronting it and making a mess out of it. Mitrotis, what is your opinion on uh, future development of Southeast European cities? And uh, can you give some advice to professionals and uh, government representatives that are listening to you right now? Well, I think Southeast Europe has a very difficult uh, topography. Uh, as, a, as a region, uh, you have always to think on globalization. Of what is the role of South, uh, Southeast Europe uh, in the world? I think uh, the location of Southeast Europe between the uh, Central Europe markets and production, which is uh, very one of the main poles around the world, and the uh, Middle East, uh, uh, the land link uh, with Turkey, and Turkey playing the role of equilibrium between the Arab countries and Europe, no? Uh, uh, Southeast Europe has a role to play there. Uh, the structure of uh, urban settlements in Southeast Europe is not a structure of huge metropolis. No? You have middle-sized towns, uh, very easy to, uh, to manage. They are really not huge metropolis which are uh, growing like mad. Uh, but you have a future of, uh, uh, of urban development, of wealth, of economic development. Um, maybe not an, uh, a population explosion. But even without population explosion, cities grow. Madrid, when I was in charge, did not grow in population. It was 6 million, and uh, we were stuck at 6 million, but it was growing in wealth. Uh, it was growing on, on wealth, and immediately wealth means the uh, adaptation and transformation of families. Madrid had gone from families of 5 to families of 2.5. So if you have the same population, but with a different family structure, more money, and you move from five members per family to 2.5, automatically you have to build a new house. And sooner or later, that growth will become and the money to produce and to provide for the infrastructure and facilities will come. So the problem is not the money. The problem is the intelligence to do things right from, this, uh, from the beginning. Thanks. <laughs> And in the end, uh, let me ask you about uh, the main idea behind your latest book published by McGraw Hill, The Art of Shaping the Metropolis, and who is it actually meant for? Well, this book is meant for the 600 metropolis around the world, which are yes. larger than 2 million inhabitants. There is 600, and they are growing like that, no? And the, uh, the uh, professionals and the politicians in charge of that management uh, do not have a tool, do not know how to deal with that kind of growth. So generally they deny it, they don't want to look at it. Or if the growth is going to take uh, beyond the horizon of their political responsibility, uh, that's a problem for the next one, not for me. No? That's, yes. uh, that's a very typical political approach. No? Obviously, those professionals in Southeast uh, Europe, as many in Spain that ask me constantly, that want to work beyond your borders, that you want to work in uh, sub Saharan Africa, or the Middle East, uh, and play an international role, that book is very useful for them as well because it gives them the tools on how to deal with that. Well, I personally find your book very interesting and I will certainly have it in my library. Thank you very much for your time and wish you a good day. Thank you very much and I hope the conference will be a full success. Thank you.